the pelvic floor is one of the most important regions of the human body. For people who work consciously with their body, it is a foundation of elastic strength and energy. We often admire people who use and have integrated their pelvic floor because they are charisma. At the same time, the pelvic floor is a taboo zone for most cultures because it is somewhere down there. If it were at the elbow, it would be no big deal, but people often talk around it. Yet the upright posture desired in Qigong and Tai Chi requires that we find a good balance between a perpendicular spine and the pelvis as a transmission space for the forces between the torso and legs. The pelvic floor plays a central role in this. If it is not conscious or slack, the whole structure sags downwards and the sacroiliac joint can become painfully blocked. Rotational movements from the central thus become increasingly difficult. Not to mention the effects on energetic work. But how can we tap into these important muscle layers? We will let our experts have their say in a moment. Let's first take a look at the pelvic floor structure. The hard piece pelvic floor that I developed, you can see here behind me. I would like to explain a few things about it. Here I refer in particular to the female pelvic floor, as that is the main clientele with whom I work. But of course, there are many intersections with the male pelvic floor, which I will also simply present. Let's get started. Firstly, let's have a look at the bone structure of the pelvic floor. The pelvic floor is like a net, and this net spans across the inner area of the pelvic floor. We can actually feel the pelvis itself. The outer bones, the ilia, we can see here. This is a frontal view. We have here the sacrum and the coccyx, and in front the pubic bone. The ischial tuberosities can be seen here. These you can feel a little when you rock back and forth a bit as a bone in the buttocks. The pelvic floor differs to the effect that the inner pelvis that we see here, that is the body opening where the child comes out during birth, and this opening therefore is considerably larger than a man's pelvis. The feminine pelvis is also rather wider in order to allow more room for the child, and the male pelvis is rather smaller and funnel-shaped. But that also means that this area where the pelvic floor spans is with men considerably smaller and compacter. Look at the layers of the pelvic floor as previously mentioned, there are three layers. The first layer spans in front on the pubic bones and stretches over to the coccyx where it has its starting point. And when we look at this with a little bit of imagination, then we have here and eight. This is the description one frequently hears. This eight contains the body openings. There is the anal opening, the vaginal opening, and here in front is the urinary tract. Accordingly, for men it looks slightly different. The pelvic floor always has the functionality to close the body and the body openings. People who have an issue with incontinence also have problems with the pelvic floor, although in this context the pelvic floor only has a supporting function. Each body opening also has its own muscles for closing.
Das ist also die erste Schicht. Schauen wir uns Let's an take a look Schicht at the second an. layer. Die zweite Schicht legt sich wie the second layer um, lies ja. like a net oder or a fan die erste over Schicht. the first layer. Die erste the first Schicht layer ist die is the so outer one and so to speak Schicht. the middle layer of the pelvic floor. Und its starting point is on the ischial tuberosities and spans across to the pubic bone. It sits here behind on the anal opening and connects itself with the first layer of the pelvic bone so that both layers are interwoven. Now we come to the third layer. That is the innermost layer and the largest layer of muscle and closes the complete pelvis and interconnects with the other two layers. It leaves here a gap to the other layers of muscle. It is naturally not empty. There are structures of tissue, the so-called fascia. Much research has already been carried out on this, and we know that fascia is the tissue and information path for muscles and nerves. And as connected as this pelvic floor now is, it is comparable to the weave of a basket. If we could now imagine that during birth this weave opens so that the child can pass through, then it is clear that the female pelvic floor needs true flexibility and that it has to manage a heavy load. Many people have pelvic floor issues without knowing it. It is common to link it to women due to birth issues. But what is frequently forgotten is that when specific and unspecific back pain occurs in the lower back, it doesn't matter whether men or women, the muscle area in the pelvic floor mainly has too much tension. And when this muscle has too much tension, the structure of the pelvis changes. Then a small misalignment arises, which can reflect on the lower back, so that training for the pelvic floor for men and women can be equally important. How can this be done? Firstly, it is important to get a feeling for where the pelvic floor sits. That can easily be done uh, when you take a rolled up towel and sit on it and simply imagine uh, you are plucking. And this plucking movement, uh, which is sometimes very fine, can be weakened or strengthened. That would be a first awareness exercise for the pelvic floor. The pelvic floor is very individual. There are certain body sizes which give a clue how this muscle, which one can't see, looks like. The first idea that I can give in order to know the size of your pelvic floor is when you put your hands together and make a bowl, then this is roughly the size of the pelvic floor. If you want to imagine how thick your pelvic bone is, then I invite you to feel with your thumb and pointer finger here on the thumb joint. This will give you an idea how thick the pelvic floor is, then you may have already determined that it is really not so much. And yet this muscle layer does such a great job.
after I'd been practicing for 10 years, 20 years, uh, I thought there has to be more. The, the books that I read um, said X, Y, and Z. And I thought, okay, this is more. And so I started looking, I started researching. And, and when I did this, I, I stumbled upon new teachers and new friends, um, people who had the same ideas that were looking for the same answers to the same questions. And, and I started working with them and, and it just took me on a completely different path. Um, and, and part of that, that path and that practice was, was working with the pelvis because um, they talk about moving from the center. And, and the, the feeling of moving from the center that I had with my kind of customary way of, of moving really wasn't what they were talking about. And, and I learned later that there's a different quality of movement. Um, and, and to be able to get that really requires working not, not only the whole body, which of course is very important, um, but the pelvic floor is just absolutely critical. And, and that's how I got into to working the pelvic floor. It, it's just a, how do I say, a, a, like a gateway. Um, I can work other parts of the body, work around the pelvis, different parts, but it really was the pelvic floor that, I said, put me in touch in a, in a deeper, more sensitive way to how the pelvis worked and how, what the kind of central role it plays in, in this kind of a, they say a pelvic centered movement or they say move from the Dantian, right? Um, it just became so very central to, to, to the practice. And, and, and I, I don't think that um, working the pelvic floor is something that you have to do like forever and ever. Um, but it, I think it's certainly a stage that, that uh, someone who wants to try to get to a higher level, it's a stage, at least our, us Westerners who start when we're adults. Uh, maybe if you start as a child, um, your body is supple and tender, and you can learn these these great lessons when you're young and build them into your system when you're early when you're young. But if we come to it as an adult, we've already got a lot of um, habits and, and bad habits, posture habits, tensions, traumas, the physical injuries, all kinds of awful things um, that we have to undo to free up our bodies to be able to to get into the state that that these old masters talked about. And, and the pelvic floor, working the pelvic floor is just critical for, for, um, for getting that, for getting to that. Now, that. That's why I think it's uh, so important. I was at one seminar and the teacher said, no, don't stand with your legs further apart, just round the crotch. And I, well, I'm, I'm so confused. So I did some research and I'm looking and, and I found the answer in, in Chinese culture. Uh, you know how the yin yang symbol looks, it's round. It's not square, it's not some other shape. And so there's something about round in Chinese culture. So I, I looked deeper and looked deeper and found that it has a, a lot of different meanings, but it, it, it has the same essential meaning. It refers to like integrity, harmony, completeness, wholeness, relationship, everything is connected. And so in American culture and language, English, American English language, we don't have this sense of, of, of roundness like, like China has. Um, and so, and I don't know how it works in, in your language, in your culture either, um, if round has the same meaning that, that it does in China. And so I, I had to make a kind of a cultural or ling language translation. Um, how, do I, how do I interpret round in, in American English? And, and the word that is best for me is just the word connection. And so I think of round being the same as just connection. So round the crotch, connect the crotch. What does what does connect the crotch mean? You know, if you look at a, a body, you know, assuming we all have healthy bodies, our legs are connected to the pelvis, our torso is connected to the pelvis, we're all connected. So what are they talking about? Connect the crotch, around the crotch. There's there has to be something else because the it's not logical. I'm already connected. What else is there to connect? So there's something else going on. And that's exactly the right question to ask. What do they mean? Pursue that question. And, and find that it's referring to a different, I found, it's referring to a different quality of movement than our everyday movement. And so this sense of roundness, completeness, rounding the crotch, connecting the crotch, has to do with connecting the legs through the pelvis, through the torso, so that there's a continuous dynamic movement of energy and nothing is getting blocked along the way. 
And, and so working in the pelvis, the pelvic floor is essential for opening up and unblocking these, these channels where energy can get blocked between, from the legs to the torso. The other really important thing to know is when we breathe together with our pelvic floor, when we move our, our pelvic floor with our natural breath, it massages all the internal organs. And this, of course, is the basis for health and vitality. And in terms of structure, in terms of fascia and connective tissue, is the pelvic floor connected with all our organs? And knowing about chi and energy flow, you know that with the movement of the pelvic floor, you enable the energy flow through all the fascia that extending up into our body meaning the three spaces we, we find balanced in our triple warmer, which are addressed in our, in our Chinese view of energy flow in the body, are being balanced by moving the pelvic floor. Now you can, can use specifically the movement of the pelvic floor which is of course also connected with our gluteals that connects at our sitting bones, the, the butt muscle and the muscles of our inner thighs are also connecting at the sitting bone. So all this playing together in relaxation will only then enable us to stand in the qigong stand without muscle tension so it all boils down to the relaxation of the muscles the right alignment of the posture because when you're young you can basically compensate you know even with a tight with a tight uh, uh, buttocks and tight muscles, you can still stand, but <clears throat> it will use up energy. And when you get older, this will show. You cannot stand long if you use uh, muscles that are tense or if you use the power of your muscles only to stand. So the real Qigong stand is the ability to guide the energy from heaven and earth, of course, through our connective tissue in the correct alignment of our tendon power. Of course, that is a very important part too, with very, very little muscle engagement. So we're talking about the, the pelvic floor exercise. Um, we don't want a pelvic floor that's hard like this ping pong paddle. We don't want one that's too loose either, like this rolly show paddle. We want something that's in between, that's more like this, this trampoline. The exercise that I did was simply to sit on a tennis ball. And I'll show you a tennis ball and a baseball side by side. Tennis ball is a little soft. Find a hard surface like a chair or a floor, and then just simply sit on this tennis ball and then slide forward and backward where you're moving between the sits bones and the tailbone. I found that that worked well in the beginning. It was very painful because my pelvic floor was like this. But later, as it got softer, it was more like a trampoline. Then I found the tennis ball was a little too soft. I wasn't getting enough dig. Then I went into using a baseball. And I found the baseball helped the muscle go in a little further. I could get more, more massage and more depth using the baseball than I could with a tennis ball. And that's the, that's the, um, the sitting on the ball exercise, a beginning exercise to help soften up a really stiff pelvic floor. So the first exercise, I start this way, rotate on the ball of my foot, 
so my feet are parallel under my hips. All right, now I'm gonna turn sideways so you can see what I'm doing, but I want you to set up the same way. And so for the first exercise, we're gonna do a simple pelvic rock on, on, the, on our hip, on our hip joint. Squat a little bit, kick forward, flat in the back, arch the back as we hit this way, back, drive the pubic bone forward, arch the back. So we, it's a simple rock. Okay? okay. So that's getting, so that's this plank. Come back. Now we're gonna work this plane. For pivoting on this joint, I'm gonna shift away to, to one side and on my heel, rotate the knee. Don't rotate the foot because the foot can move kind of by itself. It has some flexibility there, but really focus on the knee moving in this joint. Okay, and don't, don't get stuck doing this. Keep this still, just, just move your one knee. Okay, there's a lot of movement going on this way. There's a lot of movement going on this way. Okay, those two exercises are the foundation for this next, this next exercise. In this one, we want to roll both of these femur heads forward and we want to drop the back straight down. So it's this motion, it's this motion like this, straight down, Roll in. Now, where I was getting stuck when I first tried it, because I did this wrong for, for many years, took a lot of work to get to this point. What happens was, if I tried to drop the back straight down, then my knees would pop out. So how do I get my knees to stay in? That's, that's a puzzle, it's a big question. And if I try to roll these forward, then my back my butt would arch out. And so how can I get this to drop straight down and relax? I don't want to use these muscles to pull this up. I want to keep this soft and keep this and get this to drop flat down. See? Are you used to stand shoulder width apart or even a little bit wider? Or Maybe you are a little bit older woman. I'm now 60 years old. I'm going there, okay? <laughs> I'm, I'm able to apply for senior citizen discount soon. <laughs> so maybe it is easier for you to stand with your feet hip width apart. For women, this is more easy to help support the pelvic floor. But I like you to find your position of excellence, where you feel held by Mother Earth. The inside of your feet are parallel, the knees are slightly bent, the groin, the qua is open, and then you sit back as if you're sitting on a high chair, as if you're sitting on the energy cushion of Mother Earth, inviting that support with a smile of gratitude. And at the same time, when you do that, the energy flows up, lifts you up, as pulled up by an invisible string. Smile into the heaven, feeling the energy of heaven flowing down. Place your hands on your belly and breathe. In, the belly comes out, and out, belly goes in, and like as if you're kissing the earth, the pelvic floor is coming up. Together with your diaphragm going up, exhaling. Now find your rhythm, having your hands on your lower belly, in and out. And i like you to try to support your breath by when you exhale, gently pulling in your belly and ever so gently drawing up the pelvic floor. Exhale. Natural breath. 
before we start playing with our breath, which we can do using the pelvic floor too, we need to establish the natural breath. We need to be able, without even thinking about it, to breathe with your belly and to move your diaphragm. There's many reasons why we are not moving our diaphragm when we breathe. This is a different story. This has to do about trauma. This has to do about avoiding certain feelings. When we breathe with all our might and when we breathe with our diaphragm, we start feeling, feeling what is there. So our breath is an incredible anchor and tool for, for our process and work with the energy. Bring your arms on the side. And now we move into what I call the Earth Relationship Qigong. Now, when you inhale, you sink into the earth. And when you exhale, you push your feet into the ground and bring your belly in and the pelvic floor up, growing like a lotus from the mud. Find your rhythm. Inhaling and sink, exhaling, push your feet into the earth. What happens when you inhale and sink, which in many, many practices in the Qigong world, we do exactly the opposite, right? Remember that? And you may even feel a little bit strange doing this, having to inhale and sink. And when you do that, you really ground yourself. You inhale and you are here in your body, connected with the earth. And then in this connection, you raise to heaven. Okay? So also, again, this is a practice that grounds you much better than the opposite. We usually do inhale, come up, and okay, bye-bye. <laughs> I dissociate it right away. Okay, so inhaling, sinking, arriving in your body, exhaling, using your pelvic floor and your belly to rise up. And the next exercise I like to show you that uses both the natural breath and something we call the compression breathing, which is that we inhale and pull up the belly and bring, pull up the pelvic floor, excuse me, and pull in the belly. What happens when we do that? Inhaling, the diaphragm goes down, belly in, pelvic floor up, all the blood vessels and the chi will be compressed in your lower abdomen and push the energy toward your kidneys. You know, this big, our order and vena cava in our lower belly together of course with our intestines all this will be will be compressed and therefore there is an activation of blood and energy flow and this we use in the kidney breathing so what we do is we as i just explained you inhale pull up the pelvic floor draw in the belly and Bring your upper body a little bit forward. And at the same time you inhale, you pull up your pelvic floor and your anus with your mind, eye, heart power, you spiral the energy into your kidneys. So it may help you to place your hands on the kidneys. So let's do this together. Hands on the kidneys, your shoulders a little bit forward, you inhale, pelvic floor up, belly in, the pubic bone tilted a little bit toward your chin, so the lower back becomes round. Spiral the energy in the kidneys, exhale. Letting go, the breath, the tension, and be like to use a kidney sound doing that. So try in your rhythm, inhaling, Pulling up, spiraling the energy around the kidneys, exhaling. 
letting go. So in this practice, you use attention and of course the connection with your mind to bring energy and blood into your kidneys. And as you know, the kidneys, ancestral energy, ching, chi, that is so vital to our health and vitality. They're being supported in their work as, and you're, you're compressing them and the tissue like sponges. So it's like a drainage of these vital organs. Inhaling, pulling up the pelvic floor, spiraling, now. Rub the kidneys, tap the kidneys. I'd like to um, tell you a little story, um, kind of a metaphor um, about, about my experience learning. Um, I had practiced Tai Chi for maybe 10 or 20 years already during different forms and and push hands and, and sparring and and I thought I was pretty good. Um, and then one day I learned that there's another whole level and really I was just just a beginner. I, I really didn't know anything. Um, and so the the, uh, the metaphor or the analogy I like to tell is like about swimming. Let's say you go to the lake or the ocean for the first time. You've never been in the water. Someone says, hey, you know, you can walk in the water. Okay, I go walk in the water up to ankle deep. Um, and it's like, wow. I know what water is. Then someone says, you can walk knee deep in water. I didn't know that. I go out there and I think, oh, this feels different. Oh, now I know what the feeling of water is. And then someone says, you can walk waist deep. I go out to the waist deep and like, oh, that's even different from knee deep. And then someone says, you can walk chest deep in water. I do that and like, oh, my body feels a little floating and it's a whole different feeling of moving in the water. And then someone says, hey, you know, you can float on the water. You go above, you know, where the water is too deep to stand. And I float and like, oh, that's a whole different experience of the water. Then someone says, hey, you know, you can move across the water. And then, and then oh, I learned how to swim. And then someone says, hey, you know, you can see in the water and breathe underwater. And then there's a, oh, how, well, you put on this mask and you get a snorkel. And I'm swimming along, I'm looking under the water, breathing underwater and wow, I understand the water in my body a completely different way. Then someone tells me, hey, you know, you can go deep underwater and breathe underwater and see underwater. And, and oh, how? Well, here, put on the scuba equipment. I put on tanks and my mask and everything, and I'm diving deep in the water. When I put on the scuba equipment and I look back, I could see that when I was walking only ankle deep in water, I really didn't understand how to move in water at all. But when I was only walking in ankle deep water, I thought I really knew a lot about water and how to move in water. So my point is, going back to what I said at the beginning about purpose, if your purpose is to just walk in ankle deep water, great. I've had lots of fun at the beach walking in ankle deep water. Lovely afternoons with my friends, it's all good. But if you really want to go deeper and really understand what's behind the words, the deeper meaning of the words that those old masters wrote about. You got to figure out how to get on the, onto that train that's taking you into the, the scuba lessons and getting deep into the water. That's, that's, that's where I'm at right now. I, I think I'm only in knee deep water right now, but I've seen enough and I've practiced enough that I recognize how little I actually know and how much more I've got to practice and develop. Um, so happy practicing everyone. Keep at it. You'll get where you want to go. Cheers. Pelvic floor is like a net. The muscle area in the pelvic floor mainly has too much tension. Um, but it, I think it's certainly a stage that we have to undo to free up our bodies to be able to, to get into the state that, that these old masters talked about. In German, we would say, sei nicht arsch verspannt, no qigong without our perineum, without our pelvic floor.